What's going on everybody? Jump Change XD here. Hope you're all staying healthy and having a great day. So in this video, I want to try setting up my very first Antminer S9. You guys may have seen us open that on hump day hashing. I believe it was last Wednesday. It came with this Bitmain power supply and somebody actually donated this to the channel. So thank you so much. You know who you are. I honestly can't thank you enough because I probably would have never been able to get my hands on one of these without paying an outrageous amount. So my plan today is to figure out how to get this thing hooked up to the 240 20 amp circuit that I already have wired downstairs because I haven't had a chance to wire my uh, Space Goats power meter or run the brand new 30 amp circuit. I do have some wire that's kicking around right there underneath my broom as you guys can see. I just haven't had a chance to run it over to the panel and get it all wired up. So I'm gonna take this end right here and this cable right here. This thing is rated for 300 volts. It's a pretty decent gauge wire. I believe it's a 14 AWG. So just to get the initial ant miner set up and going, this should work fine. I'm going to cut this end off of this cord and we're gonna just plug it right into the uh, 240 volt 20 amp breaker that I have downstairs. All right, so here we are in the old studio. The place is an absolute disaster. I need to <laughs> clean this place out more or less and move uh, a lot of things around. But for the time being, like I said, I wanna plug in this ASIC. I wanna see how she runs and how to set it up in the computer. I just ran or wired a new 30 amp locking outlet to a two pole 30 breaker, which is right there. Sorry, I know the lighting down here stinks. This is another reason I am trying to transition to the garage for live streams and all that. But either way, I need to get this thing plugged in. So we have the locking outlet plug by the uh, C14 or C13, I can't remember. I'm gonna plug in this Bitmain power supply to all the connections on this uh, ant miner. Then we're gonna plug an ethernet cable to the front. I think I'm gonna put the actual ant miner right here. So give me a second, let me plug all this stuff in. We'll throw it right there and then we'll plug it in on camera. All right, so how's that if I just kind of leave it standing on its side, the uh, power supply? If I lay it flat, it kind of just pulls the, the back half up. So I don't really wanna put tension on the wires. I think I'm just gonna keep it like that. Honestly, I thought the PSU would go right to the side of it anyways, like most of the units look like they have. So either way, I'm gonna leave that sideways. I think that's okay. I, I have absolutely no idea how to use this thing. So I'm just gonna plug it in and then I guess I have to get into some sort of app on my computer to get the IP address and stuff and then go from there. I don't know what this little SSD I don't know what this little SD card is, but I guess I'm gonna find out. I actually need to plug my computer back in because I uh, unplugged it for the actual servicing of the panel, changing out that breaker. So, so let's plug this thing in and uh, hope for the best. I just wanna see how loud it is right off the bat. So. all plugged in and I'm kind of nervous all right let me uh kind of need two hands for this hopefully you guys can see I have the camera just resting on my knee Yeah, I guess it's kind of kind of loud. I mean, it sounds like a server power supply. Obviously, it's this little fan that's making all the noise. It's not really the ASIC to be honest. So I wonder if these will start making a lot more noise once this thing actually starts to mine. So let me um yeah, let's get my computer back on actually. All right, so I'm gonna walk you guys through the steps I had to take to get this ASIC up and running because it's been my first experience with it, so I wanna share it with you guys. First thing you need to do is come over here to Advanced IP Scanner and download this. Once you download it, it will come up and look like this. You're going to choose Scan. This is going to literally scan and read everything on your network. 
every IP is gonna show up. Literally everything on your network is going to be basically placed right on one sheet. Antminer, this is what we're looking for. So now what you're going to do is hover your mouse over the IP address. You're going to right click it and copy the IP. Once you're done copying the IP, come up here to a browser, paste it into the browser and hit enter. It is gonna bring you to a new page and it is going to ask you for a username and password. If it is basically stock factory, hasn't been changed, your username is root, R-O-O-T, and your password is root, R-O-O-T. And it should basically open up into the actual Antminer and look like this. So you're pretty much halfway there. Antminer's registering, perfect. Next step, gonna come over here to antpool.com. I will leave all the links in the description below, just so you guys know. You're gonna make an account. Basically sign up with your email, password, and that's it. Then you're gonna come and go to settings. Once you go to settings, you are going to add a sub account. As you can see, I already made one and labeled it CCXD. So now what you're going to do is come over here and go to configure, and this is where you enter your wallet address. So get your wallet address entered, save it, done. Now what you're going to do is come back to the home page on Antpool and click on Smart Pool. Scroll down and here are all the stratums. So you can make sure these are correct inside the Antminer. Now we're gonna go back to our Antminer. We're gonna to go to the Miner Configuration and we're going to make sure those three stratums are all put in here. So pool one is the first one it's going to go to and then pool two and pool three are basically secondary in case it cannot connect to the first one for whatever reason. You're gonna put in your sub account label, whatever you named it, minus CCXD as you guys saw, and then a period and you can name it whatever you want. Just like your miners inside Windows, so it just needs to be the name of the sub account, a period, and then whatever you name it on all three. I suggest you just leave the password as an X unless you really need to be more secure then you can change it to whatever you'd like. All right, after I did this, I saved and applied. My miner still wasn't working. So my next step was to come to bitmain.com. I had to go to support. Once you're in the support section, click on technical support. Then choose product installation guide and firmware. My ASIC ended up not being up on the firmware, which is why this thing wouldn't work or register. So we're gonna come down to Antminer S9. We are going to choose that, and you're going to download the updated firmware. Once you have that downloaded, again, we're gonna come back to the miner. You're gonna to go to System, and you're gonna to go to Upgrade. What you're going to do is choose the file that you just downloaded from your Downloads folder or wherever it is, and you're gonna flash the image, same as a Hive OS, USB, SSD, However you guys normally do that, same thing. Once it's done flashing, you're gonna to go to minor status and you're going to see this thing fired up. I mean, realistically, if it's not broken, nothing's wrong with it, it's going to fire up. So as you can see, mine's firing. All these zeros right here indicate the boards inside the ASIC. Apparently they have three different boards and all of these zeros indicate that they're working properly. If any X's were in any groups of zeros, then that means something is wrong in that board. It could potentially go wrong at a later date or it's already going wrong. But basically that's how you read that. The six, seven, and eight are signifying the three separate boards. Obviously, same with the line items and then it gives you the total all down bottom. So this is the total giga hashes, 13. Giga hash seems like a lot, but this is um, not the same as GPU mining to say the least. So now, one last thing, let's just go over and check out the profits real quick. We're over here on what to mine You guys know this site, like the back of your hand, I'm sure. GPUs is what we usually deal with, but now we're gonna deal with ASICs. We don't need to go to this tab, actually, unless you wanna manually punch in everything. You could just go to miners, because this literally lays out every ASIC that you could think of, and it's all right here ready to go at 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So what we're gonna do is scroll down and I'm gonna try to find the S9. I know it's pretty low on the list. So right here, Bitmain Antminer S9K is getting 
$2.31 at $0.10 cents per kilowatt hour. You guys know I'm not getting anywhere near that electric rate. So we're gonna go back up. I'm gonna type in the disgusting amount that I pay, which is 24 and a half cents. I'm going to refresh this and I'm gonna scroll back down. I wanna see how much money I'm actually losing. So right here, <laughs> Bitmain Ant Miner S 9K. A dollar 69 a day I am losing <laughs> to run this thing. So it makes $5 and six cents and I am losing a dollar 69. So unfortunately this is not profitable for me, but at a different location, it very much well could be. But as always guys, I appreciate you all for watching. Hopefully this helps some of you guys set up your ASIC. If it did, please don't forget, smash that like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys real soon. Peace.